I'm Felix White, musician, author, Tail Enders co-host, and soon to be Major League Baseball commentator. This weekend, I'm at Boston's Fenway Park to immerse myself in baseball and to see what makes the New York Yankees and Boston Red Sox rivalry so storied and intense, all in preparation for my UK Major League commentary debut, live on BBC Sport. Yes. Not too bad, right? It's beautiful, isn't it? You've got that beautiful symmetry from the brown and the green. I love that you use the word symmetry because there's nothing symmetrical about this ballpark. <laughs> A lot of ballparks you go to, yeah. you go to they have somewhat of uniform dimensions. Not here. This is the old, it's the oldest ballpark in the major league. Oh my god! Always got to keep your head on a swivel when you're up here. What happens when the ball gets hit towards you? Duck. You duck. <laughs> oh. Grew up coming here and sitting out uh, out there in left field in the grandstands oh, and the blue you? seats. Yeah, right behind in uh, section Where? 30, 31 over there in no the left. Way. Right What's behind you? we had seat behind the pole. I just got a vision of you like as a kid being like I'm gonna play yeah, one day. Yeah. Growing up, you know, a big Boston Red Sox fan with uh, Wade Boggs, Dwight Evans. Um, so it goes deep with you. Know, you. Yeah, especially against the Yankees, you know, always big time rivalries. I tell people all the time, the golden age of baseball is whenever you were about 10, 11 years old. Yes. That's when we fall in love yeah, with sports, yeah, yeah. right? And a lot of times we get it from our parents, either mom or dad. Right. And a game truly is passed down generation to generation. So it becomes like a family heirloom. I pride myself on not leaving Red Sox games early. It is like my thing. Sure. I will stay. I've sat in the rain. I've sat when it has snowed in the early seasons. I, like early in the season, I've been here when it's flurried. <laughs> oh, look at that. On the ground to first, Hosmer to second one. Tattoo, Racing to the back, Crawford for a double play. Double play. Yeah. Woo! That's how you do it. What's your relationship with the Yankees like? Do I, I do... despise them okay. every fiber of my being. Right, okay. So, you know, we're talking Red Sox Yankees. Yeah, man. And if you look down here, there's Babe Ruth and Ted Williams. Now, you don't know anything about Babe Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I do. Like, people in England, if they don't know any American sports people, Michael Jordan, then I've heard the name Babe Ruth. So Babe Ruth is absolutely the Michael Jordan of baseball. Right. He started off with the Red Sox. Right. But the Red Sox owner in those days was a guy named Harry Frizee, and he sold Babe Ruth to the New York Yankees, and it was the biggest, colossalist mistake <laughs> in the history of the franchise. Yeah, that's a joke. And before they won in 2004, it was always the curse of the Bambino. Sure. That's the Bambino, Babe Ruth. Whoa! You look 100% better. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not going to lie to you, man. I feel good in this, boy. Give I feel good in this. You're never going to be a Yankee fan. You are a Red Sox fan for life. Right, so I'm here because they're going to send me to commentate next month at the return series at the Yankees. Wow. I've never done this before. Just detail what you see. Right. Just describe what you see. Yeah. Go ahead and tell us where the pitch was, how many strikes might be on a batter. Okay, now I score the game all nine innings. This is what a Red Sox Yankees game. This was from opening day this season. I don't think anybody else has a prayer of reading it except for me. You flip it over and it's the other team's information. Second base is four, it has a number attack. First base yeah. is three, the pitcher's yeah. one, yeah. the catcher's two, Go ahead. center field center, right. right field's nine, left field seven. So yeah. you, you'll learn all that, know all that, but that goes on your scorecard. Tell him a story that you're the only person who can tell mm. it. Tell him a story about how you went to the Green Monster maybe one day yeah. and how they put the scoreboard there and now how Yankee Stadium has to yeah. be a digital scoreboard. So. Tell stories that only you have learned that you can tell. When you're listening to a game, yeah, it's nice to hear that he's hitting 247 against lefties, but it's also great to hear that you know, he grew up in a certain place and, and that was informed how he was as a player. Yeah. He competed with his brother, or in my case, my, had a father from Trinidad and Tobago and started by cricket and then yeah. ended up in baseball. I know Brian Lara, you know, famous player. Yeah, man, the you know, best. This guy, you know, incredible. And yeah. talk about talent, that, uh, that's West Indies. So I'll always have that connection. At Fenway Park, an organ is ever present, constantly reacting to the game. Meet musician and stadium organist, Josh Cantor. Taking out a small game is obviously the first thing any organ player at baseball park has got to have in their cannon. Certainly. Almost don't want to ask you this because you have to play it about 25 times every single day. <laughs> do you mind teaching me it? Yeah, oh. let's do it. No, yes. I know, I know. This is the I, I, I hear this song in my dreams. <laughs> you know, it's probably going to be at my funeral. Two, three, and C. A7, D minor 7, G7, and again C. A7, D minor 7, G7, A7. 
minor. D7. D7.